Imagine standing at the entrance of a once hidden gold mine, knowing that just beyond lies untapped wealth and secrets of the ages. That's what diving into software engineering felt like for me. But it wasn't all glittering gold. There were challenges, pitfalls, and yes, life-changing lessons. Amidst the codes and algorithms, I dug up 10 secrets that didn't just transform my career, but my entire life. Secrets I'm about to share with you now. But let's take a step back and see what led me to this gold mine in the first place. In 2020, I emerged from MIT, not with a pickaxe, but an aerospace engineering degree, ready to mine the promising terrains of Stanford for a PhD. I imagined a gold rush of autonomous drones and robots coding merely as the compass guiding the way. But as the seasons changed at Stanford, I felt the pull of a different gold mine, software engineering. Just a quarter in, I traded my compass for code, diving headfirst into the modern gold rush of software. The adventure since? Nothing short of legendary. Imagine the days of the gold rush. Thousands flocking to places, tools in hand, eyes gleaming with the promise of fortune. Now replace the gold with lines of code, the tools with computers, and you get the allure of software engineering. To an outsider, it may seem like the modern day gold rush, where people are drawn to the digital mines in hopes of striking gold. They see the glittering salaries, flexible work hours, and enviable perks thinking this is it. But just like the gold rush, not all the glitters is gold. The true wealth in software engineering isn't just in the paycheck. It's in the value an engineer creates, running like a silent river 24-7. Their code isn't just lines on a screen, it's a lifeline. Picture this, a simple error in code and billions around the world lose their primary means of communication thanks to a hiccup in meta. Or imagine the weight of a responsibility knowing that a software flaw might cost someone's entire life savings on a platform like Weeble or Fidelity. The numbers speak loudly. I once stumbled upon an article that stated Google earns about $15 million in profit for each of its engineers. The high salary and perks? Just a drop in the ocean. It's not about clocking 16 hours a day, it's about ensuring every hour counts. About creating solutions that stand the test of time and usage. Then there's the accessibility factor. In a world where professions like medicine and law demand years of education, software engineering presents a different narrative. Tech prodigies dropping out of college, steering billion dollar ships. It's the modern fairy tale, but with it comes the dragon, fierce competition. I recall my 2020 MIT graduation, a sea of computer science degrees. The rush towards the digital gold mine has made the landscape challenging, even treacherous. Today's market sees countless software engineers, many facing the cruel cycle of expendability. So while the allure is real and potent, it's crucial to remember, in any gold rush, the ones who thrive aren't just those who find gold, but those who know its true value and how to wield it. In this digital era, are you ready for the gold rush? Imagine being in the heart of the gold rush, racing against time, with every swing of your pickaxe echoing the promise of striking it rich. But now envision the tools as software codes, the mines as intricate tech problems, and the gold as the impact on the company KPIs. It's a race against the clock, and every decision feels like a defining moment. That's how it could feel working in software engineering. Every line of code can move mountains or cause avalanches. It's like having your brain perpetually in exam mode, knowing the stakes are sky high. But just like miners digging tirelessly, going full throttle day in, day out, can be a path to self-destruction. 2021 handed me a harsh lesson. While juggling roles as an engineer for two startups and managing this YouTube channel, I hit a wall, contracting two autoimmune kidney diseases. My drive to strike digital gold nearly cost me everything. The body can only endure so much and mine was sounding the alarms. Burnout isn't just fatigue. It's a fire that can consume your passion, your health, and your dreams. You could fall ill or worse, lose the spark that drew you to the code in the first place. It's crucial to understand not every day needs to echo with the intensity of a gold rush. It's okay to pace, to balance high octane days with calmer ones. Because in the long run, consistent, sustainable mining yields more gold than frantic, sporadic digging. In the race for digital gold, don't forget to cherish the miner, yourself. Your well-being is worth more than any treasure. Picture the gold rush miner again, standing in front of a vast land, pickaxe in hand. But instead of digging aimlessly everywhere, the wise miner re-examines the spots where gold was previously found. Because sometimes the real treasure lies in optimizing the known rather than venturing into the unknown. I've never been thrown into a situation where I had to pull out a node traversing algorithm from the depths of my brain on demand. More often than not, the magic lies not in crafting brand new solutions, but in refining what's already present or tapping into the existing toolkit. Think about it. If we're always trying to reinvent the wheel with every bug or feature request, aren't we risking those unseen potholes that can derail the whole vehicle? In the realm of object-oriented programming, where systems are essentially Legos of custom classes, it's like knowing how to efficiently use the blocks you've got. Mastering the art of building on foundational classes, overriding specific functions, or even creating subclasses has been my secret weapon. These skills not only 
only enable rapid problem solving, but also pave the way to scalable and predictable solutions. Now shifting the lens a bit broader, problem solving doesn't just stop at code. It's also about addressing larger systematic or team challenges. The role of engineer can morph into that of a visionary leading the charge on initiatives like process tweaks, infrastructure upgrades, or modernizing code. Yet, here's the clincher. Given that the tech blueprints of most companies are fairly rigid, the real challenge is crafting innovative solutions within the framework. It's like finding creative ways to extract more gold using the same old tools. At the end of the day, being a maestro at problem solving within a system's boundaries trumps the raw memorization of algorithms any day. While some gold miners tirelessly dig deep, searching for rich veins, others skim the surface, collecting whatever is easy to find. Both might return with something in their pouch, but who do you think finds the nuggets that changes their fortunes? In the realm of software engineering, the freedom we have is double-edged. There's this invisible curtain, especially pronounced in the age of remote work, where no one's truly clocking your hours or assessing your work. It's tempting then to coast, to pick the low-hanging fruits. For the occasional breather, absolutely necessary. Continual value demands rhythm, and not every day demands a sprint. But here's where the trap lies. I've observed two breeds of engineers in the same team with identical title and pay. One relentlessly tackles the beastly tasks, pushing the boundaries of their capabilities. The other, they play it safe, opting for straightforward tickets. Both might tick off equal tasks, but trust me, it's not the quantity, but the complexity that scales you up the ladder. This isn't just about recognition, although that often follows. It's about the enriching loop of personal growth. Dive deep, solve the trickier problems, and you earn not just team trust or accolades, but a surge in self-confidence. The inverse, however, is equally true. Stay in the shallow end too long, and you'll find yourself outpaced, not just by colleagues, but by the very industry you're in. I've witnessed it firsthand. Engineers, once very skilled, now reluctant to embrace challenges, and with the software engineering domain bursting at its seams with talent, companies won't flinch before trading a surface skimmer for a depth diver. In the grand gold rush of software engineering, it's not about how much ground you cover, but how deep you're willing to dig. While one miner is keenly sifting through the waters, eyes on the treasure, another one is engaged in barter, exchanging tools, sharing insights about potential gold sites, and making allies. Both are in the gold rush, but one is playing a broader, more strategic game. The same holds true in software engineering. Picture this, you're armed with the most advanced coding skills, but you can't articulate your requirements, present findings, or negotiate it's like holding on to a gold nugget but not knowing its worth. Soft skills, they're the real game changer. A lot of the time they hold more weight than even mastering the code. To hone these golden interpersonal skills, I took three deliberate steps. Firstly, I made an earnest effort to connect with my colleagues, not as programmers or designers, but as people. Understanding their motivations, their stories, bridges gaps and fosters trust. Be it casual conversation at company events or intentional one-on-ones, these interactions lay the foundation of genuine teamwork. Next, I stepped up to showcase my work. At my current organization, we hold regular showcases where everyone, coder or not, shares their progress. Taking center stage here not only refined my presentation skills, but also got my name resonating across the board. Lastly, I didn't just remain a silent spectator in meetings. We know those discussions where the higher-ups are passing around ideas while the rest is just spectate. Not anymore. Whenever I had a valuable insight, I unmuted and chimed in. It's empowering and establishes my position in the whole team fabric. Being the best coder might get you the gold, but building relationships and advocating for yourself, that's how you mint it into currency. Remember, in the vast terrain of software engineering, the real treasure lies in human connection. Consider two gold miners. One has specialized equipment fine-tuned for a specific gold site. He extracts efficiently from that site, but his tools might be less effective elsewhere. The other possesses tools versatile for varied terrains, but might not extract as deeply in any one spot. Software engineering, in many ways, mirrors this scenario. Imagine two software firms. While both claim the title of software company, their tech stacks might be completely different. Contrasting front-end frameworks, distinct database architectures, and divergent back-end languages. It's like two minds with very different terrains. Yes, if you've sharpened your coding acts, adapting to new languages or tools becomes relatively smoother. Yet, often higher tier roles at companies demand deep familiarity with their specific tech terrain. They seek gold miners who know the nuances of their specific gold site, avoiding the need to train them from scratch. Take a friend of mine at Meta, a proficient coder. Yet, he told me a concern. The more he delves deep into Meta's unique tech environment, the more he feels he's straying from the broader landscape of computer science. In my journey through the software realm, I've seen this pattern. Specializing offers depth and mastery, but with a caveat, the risk of becoming too niche. It's a tightrope walk, but awareness is the first step to striking that balance. In this digital gold rush, are you a specialist miner or a versatile one?
During the gold rush, miners didn't work alone. They often formed teams, understanding that collaboration increased chances of finding treasures. Similarly, in the expansive digital minds of software engineering, seeking help early can make all the difference. As a back-end software engineer, I often feel like the miner who's called upon only when a tunnel collapses or a tool breaks. The narrative is simple. Something malfunctions, it's flagged, fixed, and we move on to the next challenge. But I've recently tweaked my approach. I no longer wait in silence until I hit a dead end. Now I seek guidance proactively. Surprisingly, many times, the issue I faced weren't due to my own oversights, but systematic hurdles, like lack of permissions or recent infrastructure changes. By raising a hand early, not only did I streamline my tasks, but I also provided invaluable feedback to our DevOps engineers on potential pitfalls. My proactive approach paved the way for a rich cross-team dynamics. What I once feared as being intrusive turned out to be the exact opposite. The colleagues I reached out to became collaborators in exploration, eager to dive deep with me unveiling the mysteries beneath the code surface. In this digital gold rush, remember you're not alone in the mines. Embrace the spirit of collaboration and you might just uncover treasures beyond your wildest expectations. In the vast terrains, some miners merely scratched the surface while others dug deep, unveiling untapped gold veins. The difference, the drive within. In the evolving landscape of software engineering, your growth, be it in coding prowess, professional stature, or compensation, is tethered to your own ambition. As you delve deeper into the realm of software, the ropes you once clung to for guidance become less constraining. Beyond the scheduled meetings, the map of your day, week, or quarter is yours to draw. With experience, you can carve out benchmarks for paths you expect. One where you merely meet expectations, another where you surpass them, and the one where you leave coworkers in awe. The altitude you aspire to reach, that's on you. You hold the pickaxe to chisel new skills, challenge your own boundaries, and gauge the value you're minting for your team and the broader organization. Even within the traditional nine to five bounds, there's space to venture into new coding languages or explore new SDKs. You expect that the more you learn and apply to your job, the quicker your compensation title will rise. However, I learned very quickly that unless you voice your value, you'll stay stagnant in your career. So get comfortable with talking compensation and title often and wear your achievements like badges. Technical brilliance may be the gold, but advocating for its worth is the market where it's valued. In this digital frontier, don't just be a diligent gold miner. Be the one who also knows how to trade their gold. Don't just dig deep. Ensure your finds are seen, valued, and rewarded. In the gold rush, it wasn't just about finding gold. It was creating a system, staking claims, setting up camps, and knowing when and where to dig. It was these systems that separate a successful miner from one lost in the wilderness. Venturing into the software landscape, there's a richness to manage beyond code. It's a vast ecosystem necessitating roles from product and engineering managers to client success experts. Picture a vast sprawling mine. There's a global map directing where to dig, but equally vital is understanding the health of current tunnels and excavations. The best teams I've worked with didn't just have skilled coders. Systems ensure synchronization, enabling everyone to align with the grand vision. It's what empowers software engineers to delve deep without getting lost, free from the burdens of logging every line of code written or fearing duplicate efforts. It assures that every pickaxe swing, every effort aligns with a clear endpoint. A structured process refines feedback from the leaders and users to the software engineers, converting them into actionable tasks. Every software engineering leader understands this. They know that it's not just about mining, but refining, molding, and trading. Hence, for an engineer looking to etch their mark, Championing and refining these systems might just be the pathway to success. In this complex world of software engineering, be the one who not only extracts, but also streamlines, adding value to every ounce of effort. Gold miners came from diverse corners of the world, each bringing with them distinct methods, tools, and insights. It wasn't a lone prospector's game. It was a melting pot of techniques that dug up treasures unseen. The diversity of their backgrounds became their competitive edge. Similarly, in the realm of software engineering, diversity isn't just a buzzword, it's the lifeblood. Think about it, if every engineer on a team grew up in the same area, had the same previous work experience, and have the same strengths and weaknesses, I guarantee that team won't last long. They'd be like miners with the same map, likely to miss vast veins of untapped gold. To create a product that resonates with a broad spectrum of users, an engineering team must have a diverse set of perspectives. It's this mix of experiences and viewpoints that catches those nuances in design, identifying potential pitfalls and championing groundbreaking features. When crafting any solution, whether regarding internal processes or outward facing features, a diverse team builds better systems, which ultimately leads to better products. As you navigate software engineering, seek diversity, because in diversity, we find true wealth. And so, as we emerge from the depths of this digital gold mine, our bags filled with the 10 golden lessons, we find ourselves at a crossroads. 
Just as gold miners of old would shape, mold, and create from their precious finds, now it's up to you. Will you put these software engineering secrets to use? Will you allow them to change your life as they did mine? Remember, the real treasure isn't just in discovering these lessons, but in applying them. If you feel like you need help navigating your young career, or if you're overwhelmed with all of your options, you're not alone. I recommend you check out AspireMentors.Tech, where we transform uncertainty into a clear, actionable, and empowered journey. Apply to be part of our first cohort where potential is recognized, nurtured, and magnified. With Aspire Mentors, you're not just starting a program, you're embarking on a transformative journey to become a positive world changer. Head over to aspirementors.tech to apply and book a free call with me. If you want to know my personal journey of becoming a senior software engineer without a CS degree, check out this video here. And this is a video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.